this video contains information that may not be suitable for children. Parental discretion is advised. Today's video is a reaction to another video where Brittany Renner stated that as the mother of a millionaire NBA player's baby, she only receives $30,000 per year in child support. In South Carolina, where Brittany reportedly lives, the court orders 25% of the non-custodial parent's income to be paid in child support to the custodial parent. PJ Washington's annual salary is over $3,017,000 and 25% of $3,017,000 means that Brittany is entitled to receive $754,375,000 a year. That comes out to $14,567 every week. Yet Brittany said that she only receives $2,500 a month. Do you believe her? Let's talk about it. The following is presented under Title 17 U.S. Code 107 that allows fair use of a copyrighted work for the purposes of criticism, teaching, and parody. Any attempt to infringe upon the right of fair use will result in an immediate legal response. A lot of people think I'm getting X amount in child support and I don't have to work and I have to do all this stuff, but it's like I very much provide for my child. Um, <clears throat> you can't rely on your child's father to provide for you. So you have to make a way. It's never been about money, it's never been about that, but it's like, especially me not getting 200,000, which people always say that, which is like, I'd have all my homegirls get pregnant by him. If that's that's the number. But it's like, I provide for my child. Yeah. I get $2,500 a month. Brittany presents herself as an intelligent woman. She often makes videos giving advice to other women on how to deal with men. But if she only receives $2,500 a month in child support, how smart can she really be? $2,500 is what a woman would receive if her child's father made $120,000 a year. As PJ Washington's baby mama, she is supposed to be getting nearly $15,000 every week, not $2,500 per month. So how did Brittany get stuck receiving 25 times less than what she's entitled to under South Carolina child support rules? Is it that she's not too smart or is she just cheap? I find it amazing that while Brittany is an IG booty model, she sometimes tries to present herself as a woman of virtue. If I could talk to her, I would have to ask her, woman of virtue, how cheap are you? As my subscribers already know, my degree is in biblical studies, so I'm an expert at relating any issue that is happening in today's society to a story in the Bible. Now, several years ago, I presented a Bible study teaching titled, Woman of Virtue, How Cheap Can You Get? And it's about a woman who basically sold herself for a few coins and two big boxes of breakfast cereal. Now, that Bible story reminds me of Brittany because I perceived that she could have gotten more than $2,500 per month. But when she realized that $2,500 a month added up to $30,000 a year, she went cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs and settled for what amounts to a lifetime supply of breakfast cereal. Hosea chapter three, verses one through three says, Then said the Lord unto me, Go yet love a woman beloved of her friend, yet an adulteress, according to the love of the Lord, toward the children of Israel, who look to other gods and love flagons of wine. See, modern women love to gulp down flagons of wine, right? So I brought her to me for 15 pieces of silver and for an omer of barley and a half omer of barley. And I said unto her, You shall abide or live with me many days, and you shall not play the harlot, and you shall not be for another man, and so I will be for you. Now, in this scene, there's a woman named Gomer who was beloved of her friend. And that means he was a friend with benefits or a man that she was having sex with off and on, but he loved her. However, she was still seeing other men to get her needs met, to get her once satisfied or her bills paid. So she would go out and give herself up to, to other men and get drunk or high. But now the man who loved her wanted to have her all to himself. So he made a deal to see her exclusively by paying her 15 pieces of silver or $15 and an omer and a half of barley, 
which is two dry gallons of cereal. And see, Gomer sold herself to the man for basically 15 bucks and two big boxes of cereal. Now, this must have been a lot better offer than she was used to getting, yet it wasn't that much. So if this was a good deal for her, how cheap does she normally sell herself for? Now listen, I would never encourage any woman to become a sex worker, all right? I'm just presenting this thought to make a point. Britney has one of the best booties in IG model history. If she wanted to be a high-priced call girl, she could probably get $5,000 or more per day. Now, if she found a way to monetize showing her body instead of showing it on IG for free, she could probably make a million dollars every year easy. Now, when Britney said that she only gets $2,500 a month, I had to ask myself, damn, how cheap is this chick? Is she like Gomer or she's the type of woman that you can buy for almost nothing? When I was a young man, there was a lot of young women in the neighborhood that older men described as young, dumb, and full of cum. And that means that their intelligence had been diminished by having sex with too many men. Now, if it's true that Britney only gets $2,500 a month, it means that she likes to bang, but she's not smart enough to get, to, to get the big bucks. Hosea 1.3 says, So he went and took Gomer, the, the daughter of Dibla'em, which conceived and bare him or her husband a son. Now, the reason that the Bible tells us Gomer's father's name is to make the point that sexual deviancy is passed on from the father to his children. The name Dibla'em in Hebrew means too sweet, double embrace, or twin balls. And this reveals that her father was a type of pimp. See, he was known for having many women or even being bisexual and had a lust for both women and other men. So brothers, this story is warning you that if you don't want your sweet little girl to grow up blowing off every Gary, Harry, Larry, and Jerry, you better get some dick discipline in a hurry. Now, as she conceived again and bare a daughter, and God said unto him, Call her name Lorohema, for I will no more have mercy upon the house of Israel, but I will utterly take them away. Now, when she had weaned Lorohema, she conceived and bare a son. And then God said, Call his name Loami, for you are not my people, and I will not be your God. Now, notice in verse 3, it says that Gomer conceived and bare him, meaning her husband, a son. However, in verses 6 and 8, it just says that she conceived and bare two other children but it does not say that they were her husband's kids. Now, it gives the impression that they were the children of two other men. See, God apparently saw what she did and got upset. Now, Goma reminds me of the church that has been acting in, in, or in fornication with other gods. So he declares that he will put them utterly away and they will not be his people and he will not be their God. Now, if you're a Christian and you can't figure out why God hasn't blessed you the way that your preacher has been saying that God is about to, fixing to, or getting ready to, it's because you don't realize that your pastor has been leading you to fornicate with Babylonian gods, not the Most High God. And here's a Muppet News Flash. Gomer, Brittany Renner, and the church or the Bride of Christ are symbols of the, moderate, of the modern feminist woman that sees nothing wrong with being promiscuous. Hosea chapter 2 verses 1 through 7 give you an idea of how God is going to deal with the church and the modern woman. It says, plead with your uh, mother, plead, for she is not my wife, neither am I her husband. Let her therefore put away her whoredoms out of her sight and her adulteries from between her breasts. Lest I strip her naked and set her as in the day that she was born and make her as a wilderness and set her like a dry land. That means make her unable to have more kids and to slay her with thirst or with lust. And I would not have mercy upon her children, for they be the children of whoredoms. See, they were apparently somebody else's kids, right? For their mother played the harlot. She that conceived them has done shamefully, for she said, I will go after my lovers. See, I'm going to find me some men that will give me my bread and water. Uh, uh, that means who going out to meet my needs and pay my bills my wool and flax, buy me some clothes, my wine and oil, and who will take me out to eat to the club and get high. Now, her casual attitude about giving herself up to other men apparently made God angry because now here comes the penalty. Therefore, behold, I will hedge up your way with thorns and make a wall that she shall not find her path. Now, here we find a Bible example of a woman hitting the wall and we know that the wall is undefeated, right? So she, so now she, like Kevin Samuel said, 
she would find old boyfriends on social media and say, Hey, big head. Hey, big head. Trying to strike up a conversation in order to get them to come back. And she will follow after her lovers or she'll start stalking the brothers, trying to fight their new girlfriends, showing up at their job, scratching up their car and stuff. But she shall not overtake them. That means because she's not, they, they're not interested in her anymore. See, it was her booty and her beauty that they wanted at first, but her lack of inner beauty made the booty undesirable. And she shall seek them but not find them because she was acting so crazy that they had to move and get a new job, okay? Then, then she would say, I will go and return to my first husband. See, that dude that loved her but didn't have much loot and wasn't as tall or handsome, for then it was better with me than now. So this is, there are a lot of young black men who have lost respect for modern women, and most of it has to do with too many of you ladies acting like dudes, thinking that you can sling your coochie all over the city without consequence. But you are not completely to blame, all right? A contributing factor to this problem is the, the brothers are being programmed to devalue women through negative movie, TV, and social media images. Plus, since 74% of African-American households are headed by a woman, the majority of young men today do not have a strong male influence in the home to teach them how to counter those images, uh, those negative images. Now, without a positive image to counter the negative image, the negative image becomes accepted by the young man being programmed as real. And see, our young men, therefore, need to be deprogrammed of the false media image of both manhood and womanhood. Then he must be educated on God's purpose for creating a woman. Now, images that dominate movie, TV, and, and cell phone screens portray women as objects through which a man is to satisfy his sexual desires and, there, and thereby confirm his manhood. Black women can't get a role in a movie unless she's either taking her clothes off, displaying her body, or going to bed with a white man. A repetitive exposure to these images is programming the minds of young men and women, and as a result, they have been trying to bring those images to life in the way that they act and dress. Whereas art used to imitate life, life now imitates art. But the problem for the young man is compounded because the young woman is validating these images by bringing them to life. But now the young brothers have reciprocated by emulating and validating negative Im media images also. Thus, they have been bringing the gangster, baller, player, uh, uh, and rapper images to life for the young woman. So the social struggle for girls to live up to the media's standard image has caused modern young women to lose their virtue to the generation of young men that is supposed to value them. All right. Now, the situation that we face in the black community today has become paradoxical. Our young men and women need to have their minds repaired due to the media's heavy influence on their culture. And normally we would try to work to change the young man first because God ordained the man to lead. Right. But if the young woman continues to validate movie, TV, and IG images while we are trying to change the young man, there will be no motivation for him to change. And the reason guys don't wear jerry curls anymore is because women would laugh at him, right? So if a young woman didn't act like she was attracted to cats with their pants hanging down, they'd pull them up. Therefore, trying to deprogram the male without deprogramming the female first would be a futile effort. Now, our women must help men through the deprogramming process by the example she sets. And while God created the man to lead, he ordained the woman to set the standard by which she, she, would, that by which she should be led. See, if the modern woman wants respect, she will only get the respect that she commands by setting a standard. If a man is mistreating her, she must correct him. If he's doing something that she doesn't like, she must tolerate it or, or must not tolerate it. Absent physical violence, a man can only do what a woman allows him to do. Men can only get away with whatever women allow them to get away with. See, women have the power to set the moral, social, and economic agenda in our society, so it's time for them to start exercising that power in a godly manner. Now, if a young woman is virtuous and commands respect, a, woman, a, a young man will treat her uh, with respect. And if the young man truly loves her and wants to make love to her, he will lead her to the altar and make a commitment to her along with the children that they will give birth to together. Well, that's all the time that I have for now. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel, share this video with your family and friends, and I'll be back with something new that nobody told you. 
Until then, remember that God loves you, I love you, and there's nothing you can do about it. And I'll see you next time on Zero to Millions and Dr. Bill Enterprises.